Welcome back. We will proceed immediately with the weather face. All right. That's a one. <laughs> and a one is actually fair weather. <laughs> okay. So back to the fighting. Axis operation phase. This turn I'm afraid of the Air Force here and here that the Soviets have and I'm going to try to take them out and that allows me to demonstrate airstrikes so the range for airstrikes is 7 hexes and airstrikes is when you, when you attack another air force mm -hmm. so we're going to try to take out this air force here flying an airstrike when we do that we will resolve, uh, resolve a normal air to air battle so we roll the dice and we apply the modifiers so we do not add sorties before we fly and it doesn't cost any production points to activate the air unit Let's do the rolling. Interesting. So now we apply the modifiers and make sure you are using the air naval combat dire modifier. The German air unit will get plus two. And then we need to deduct the number of sorties that the unit has. Both have four sorties. So uh, Russian minus four, that's one. And the Soviets. No, the German gets two. So then we get the diamond. So okay. we need to look at this table now to see what happens after we have applied the, the combat modifier and we know the result, which is the diamond. The first step here is sorties. We add sorties. And the diamond result will says that attacker and defender each add one sortie. Then we look for the effect. If the combat was an airstrike and it was an airstrike, the combat is now over. All right, so that's it. One sorted to each of the sides. Well, I'm not sure that's the best that I could uh, have hoped for. Huh. Well, okay. So the Germans can only fly one more. Perhaps it's better to use use it in combat. Uh, I'm going to activate the Romanians and make an attack here, just to see if they can break through with a lucky roll. Yeah, I'm not committing anything for either side. I have a ground support marker. I could commit for for the Romanian side, but I want to use it further up north. Of course the Romanian gets 8 movement points and attacking across a straight is minus 2 and into a clear hex is one more so that puts them down to uh, 5. The weather is good so that's all good. We are rolling to see. That's not going to do it. You have to take minus 2 for attacking across a straight and that is attacker stopped. It's time for the fourth Panzer to do something meaningful. It will Activate. I'm paying two production points to activate that one. And I'm going to strike out at the guards here. And I'm going to commit the Air Force. I think the Soviets are going to add on an S order from this Air Force. One, two, three. Yeah. So first there's an air combat. Let's roll for the air combat. Luftwaffe get plus two. And then we need to deduct the number of sorties. And that is five for air for Luftwaffe. Oh. And, uh, and the other one has four, so one one, and there's a diamond. Have we already seen that a diamond means one sortie each? Oh, so this is an air support. So the diamond means that both the attacker and defender will get the benefit. So now it's the ground combat. <laughs> Come on! Ah, <laughs> oh. the German Panzer gets two for being German and two for being Panzer in good weather. They also get two for having air support. Yeah, I forgot that they get 10 points when they activate and this will cost two to attack. So uh, so they are down to eight points left. The Soviets, well, this, this is a, let's have a look at the unit. So this is first time this type of unit is in battle in this game. And it's a guard guards unit. Um, mobilized infantry, meaning they would get 10 movement points. Doesn't matter here, but what matters here is the star. Because that means that they are they are elite. The elite unit get a plus one modifier, and they get plus two for air support as well. Almost forgot that. That's a diamond, and nothing happens, which is interesting. Even though the, the, it was a six-two result, all the modifiers uh, for the German units really makes them uh, a very powerful unit. They were still able to get another result on this bad die roll. So, uh, yeah, wow. I added on the sorties for, for, for the uh, air forces. Because I have 8 movement points left, 
I'm going down to 6 and attacking again. But this time the Germans do not have any air force available. The Soviets will fly from the same air force that flew last time. And again a terrible die roll. The Axis are tanks in fair weather and they are Germans. Or the Soviets are elite and have air support. Again there is no effect which is pretty impressive giving all the support the Russians are getting and the bad die rolls the Axis are doing. It's very impressive that the Panzers are able to get a uh, no result. We'll do it again. We're down to four. There is one available uh, air sortie left for the German player, uh, for the Soviet player, and he is not going to use that. He will saving that for a uh, possible offensive attack next round. Okay. Germans plus two for Panzer and plus two for the nationality bonus, and the Soviets plus one for the elite. And now there is no support, and now we will be getting a result here. It's a defender retreat. I'm very impressed with the Panzers. In fair weather, they are fantastic. This guy will retreat here. Um, if I with the Panzer go here, there will be trouble with my supply lines. I could move the Hungarians into the gap here. So if I move here and fill the gap with another unit, and if the Soviets are attacking in here, they will cut me off, and then the Panzer will be isolated. So I'm keeping the Panzer a little bit back and I'm switching targets right four moving points left I will use spend two of them attacking the 44th army here and no air support and no event marker <laughs> I wonder how many sixes the uh, Soviets have rolled with this die it must be quite a few Germans they are a tank unit in fair weather and they are Germans the Soviets they are nothing they have no support, they are not elite, so they will stay on 6. Yeah, I just had to check, they are not isolated either. So, uh... But that's a no effect. The last two points I will spend doing the same thing, attacking that is. And there are no, mo mo no event markers from either side. Let's see if it's enough to make a result here. Two for tanks, two for Germans. And these guys stay, and there's a def that's a defender retreat. So, last two points is spent, um, and the 44 need to retreat. Uh, so I was a bit stupid. If I had moved here and attacked this direction, these guys couldn't retreat anywhere, and they would have to be reduced. No, they can actually retreat here. Yeah, and I'm putting my Panzer in here. No, I can't march in that direction. I wanted to march there, but and threaten this frontier, but. Then the first tank will make havoc here in my units here. So uh, I, I can't afford to pull that Fort Panzer off the line. Let's just activate the Romanians, give them 8 points of movement, have them attack the 12th army. So it's 2 for the rough and 1 for attacking. That should put them down to 5. I have, yeah, you see, I have a ground support marker, but if I commit that then the Russians will commit a tank event marker um, and this is supposed to be done secretly but it's very difficult now that I am a solo player to decide if they are committing the tank marker or not hmm. Well, I'm going to commit the ground support marker to the Romanians and I'm going to roll a die to see if the Russians are committing their tank marker so let's give it a 50% chance and on a 1 to 3 they will commit they don't. Okay, then we roll for combat. Ha! Okay, perhaps the Romanians can do something here. Oh, that's a surprise. They have to take a minus one because they attack in a rough, but they will get a plus one for the uh, ground support. And the Soviets, they are just up there in the mountain and they will not get anything. Nope. They didn't commit a tank marker. They should have. Because this is... Uh, Defender disrupted. If they have the tank marker, they will only have a retreat, but now they have a defender disrupted. So the disruption means that they are disrupted. Uh, sorry, they are reduced. And now they have to retreat as well. And there is nowhere to go. There's an air unit and an army there, so they can't go there. 
and there are enemies all around them so that means that they're eliminated wow way to go Romanians well, technically this becomes a no enemy no zone of enemy control so they will advance in here and they have five movement points left so should they attack more yeah of course they should attack more they're in a, on a good roll they are not attacking the guards but they're attacking here the 37th army is defending along with this uh, air force here and the air force doesn't matter for the uh, for the attack so and it's in a clear so that's two more points now comes the question if the if the soviets needs to commit the tank marker i think they do i think they get scared now it's either the tank marker or they have to fly support and i want to use this offensively they don't get any positive modifiers and the soviets get a plus two so that's an attacker stopped so if i continue to attack these guys and I'm able to drive them away then Rostov would be isolated and that will make Rostov fall I hope so I will try to do that I am trying with the 6th infantry army paying a point to activate that so that is 6 points left and they are attacking I can't commit anything from the access side but, oh, it's across a river. I need to uh, deduct one more point because I didn't see that was a river, so it's five. Um, question, should the Soviets commit the air support that's in this hex? No, I'm not committing. I'm still going to try to save the air force for an offensive. Let's roll the dice. <laughs> the Germans? Oh. Germans get two for being Germans and they have to take one away because uh, there is this river there's no defensive modifier for the other guys but still they managed to do an attacker stopped so these guys are spent so I am activating the Italians and I'm going to move them one and I'm going to make an attack make an attack against the sixth so that is going to cost me two more of the five and we roll the dice so I want to try to strike east towards Stalingrad and that's not going to happen with that die roll there are no bonuses for the Italians and no f no bonuses for the Soviets and attacker stopped really really amazing how is it possible that I can roll so bad for the axis let's activate the Panzer for two production points from Germany and attack this tank unit here okay that should leave them with eight okay so, so let's see if the German tanks can achieve anything yes they can with that rule for sure okay two for being Germans two for being tanks in fair weather the other guys they get two for being tanks in fair weather Defender disrupted. That's a fantastic result for from the, for the Germans. For the tank unit is disrupted, meaning it has to be reduced and it has to retreat. It can only retreat to twenty seven fifty one. And I will follow, for sure. Yeah, I'm going to target the same unit again. Should leave me with six points. I think if the Russians want to save the tank unit they need to use the air support one two three four five but their support is out of range another okay roll for the panzers two for being german two for being panzer in fair weather the other guys get two for being tanks defend the retreat can retreat here I don't want to follow with the Panzers because I'm going to spend three points attacking Kursk. Let's do that. Let's attack Kursk. Inside Kursk, there is this shock unit and there is an air force which doesn't contribute to the combat. That's three left. Ah, the Axis need this. Come on. All right. Panzers get two for being Panzers. And they get two for being Germans. 
Mm, they have to take a minus one for attacking into a city. And that's it. The other guys. Um, no, they are shock units. Um, but that should give them plus one for being elite and plus one for being shock and minus two for being in low supply. That still puts them on one. Defender disrupted. Interesting. This unit is eliminated before it could do anything. And then I will take ground and I drive into a hex with an enemy unit, enemy air unit. So when I enter hex with an enemy air unit, that unit immediately moves via air movement rules. And that means it can move up to 10 spaces. But it, but it must end this movement in an hex containing a transport line or a friendly city with no enemy counters or no enemy units in it. And it can move even though it has six sorties. I have retaken Kursk. And I have three movement points left. Of course I'm striking out against the Panzers here, which are isolated. Costing two points. Yeah. Plus two for being Soviet Panzers. Plus two for being German Panzers. Plus two for being German. Yeah, plus two for Panzers, plus two for Germans. The Soviets need to take a minus two for being reduced as well. So that's a DD. And in this case, a DD would eliminate this unit for sure, no matter if it could retreat or not. Oh, I forgot to add the minus for being isolated. Well, it doesn't matter. Kursk is retaken. So now is a chance for me to use the Hungarians. Because now I will move them one, two, and then I will attack the ninth, three, four. So they have four points of movement left. This is a nothing happens. So we pay two points and attack again. Oh, huh. <laughs> the normal rolls for the axes are back. Attacker stopped. I have three points of production left for the Germans. So that's fine. I can activate then the Kharkov unit and try to attack Knight. Trying to, well, push them away from Kharkov. That should be seven. They will cost two to attack. This plus two for being Germans. Yep, and that's it. Defender retreat, which is nice because they can't. So they are reduced. We go again. Germans get plus two. And these guys actually get a minus two for being reduced. So it is defender disrupted. So they are out of here. Hmm. Should I dare to leave Kharkov? I don't think I dare to leave Kharkov. If I move there they can smash me and then they can just drive into Kharkov. Now the question is down south here in Rostov. If I should try and attack on Rostov, it's very tempting. I need to make progress. I will make. I will. I will try. Oh uh, yeah. Since I have less than three production points anyway, I can't reactivate my air force. I always forget that. Attacking into an enemy city that is going to be two to move into the city and one for attacking in clear weather. There's still no Russian air support. That's the famous axis roll again. <laughs> when it really matters, we roll bad. So it's plus two for being Germans. And it's minus one for attacking into a city. The other guys to get plus one because they are elite. Attackers stopped. Okay, it was a long shot anyway. Well, at least that concludes the axis turn. We do a quick supply check. I think we are good. We are for once, we are all in supply. Then it's the Soviets operation phase and they have four units that has been eliminated. No units that they can mobilize these turns so they can use all the 12 points to mount attacks. So if I think about this, I see that there's one weakness now in the Axis plan and that is that they have put their Panzers here in Kursk. Yeah. While in Kharkov only the, inter uh, only the infantry is defending. But to get units down here to attack Kharkov I, I can't see how I can do that. 
if I can eliminate this Ponser unit and the Italians, then I can mount an attack on Kharkov perhaps. I'm going to pay two production to activate this tank unit and attack this tank unit here. That's only it's only uh, it costs only two movement. It's a tough unit to take out. And I have one shot of doing this. Now I'm adding the last air support, one, two, three, that I have available. I need to push this unit away in a retreat. So I can move down here and have a go at Kharkov. If I can do that, I will win this turn. So I'm committing the last sortie. Last. I guess you don't commit sorties, you commit air support and they fly sorties. Not completely sure about how the English language uh, works at that point. No, Germans get plus two because they're Germans and they get plus two because they are tanks. The Soviets get plus two because they are tanks and they get plus two from that air support. And sadly for the Soviets, that's a nothing happens. I'm sort of committed to this now, so I'm just going to try again. That's a better roll. <laughs> Still there's nothing happen. We go down to four and we attack again. Come on comrades. Okay, it's getting better and better. Two for Germans, two for Panzers, two for Panzers. Still there's nothing happen. I have two more attacks. No, this, that's an equal. That's not going to do it. They barely avoid an attacker stopped. The last attack now. It's actually attacker attrition. Not only is the Ponser spent, it's a reduced as well. So that didn't go well at all. Let's switch to plan B. If I have a plan B. I don't really have a plan B. Okay, it's very tempting to keep pushing here. But uh, that, I don't think it, 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 it is very meaningful. Oh, then the road is open. I think I need to fall back. So I'm going to pay one point, production point, to move the guards into Voronezh. I'm going to um, pay one more point to activate the, what is it, 44th. And I'm going to pay two, four, five, six, seven to assault the German field army here. And I'm paying to add this guy into the assault and also the guy underneath here. So the reason I do this is that the most threatening infantry unit on the board, which I can get to, is the 6th army here. I'm not so afraid of the Italians. So um, by going around now and assaulting I have one chance to take it out because I get a plus 3 on my die roll. Uh, this guy is going to be the lead army so there is no penalty for attacking across uh, a canal. So okay so <laughs> uh, is it wise? I don't know. But uh, this German army is stronger than each and every one of my full strength armies here, so it will fight with a plus two modifier on the die roll. So it's very difficult to take out in a one to one combat. So I'm trying the assault way. Let's see. Okay, it might work. Plus two for the German units. Yeah. We get a plus one for every one of the members in the assault or the support assault guys. So that should deal with six. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a defender retreat. That was not what I hoped for. I was hoping for a reduction here in strength, so it will retreat here. And the lead unit, is he going in there? I'm staying. Okay. Okay, so the only Russian units left now are, there's a guy in Stalingrad I could do something with, and there's a guy here that I can try to do something with. I'm going to try to activate the guards and attack the Romanians just to thin out the lines of the Axis faction a little bit. The guards get 10 points because they are a mobile unit and they cost 2 to activate. Oh, I probably forgot to pay 2 for this guard as well. I'll do that now. Um, 
and the Romanians will cause three to attack because they are in a rough. Okay, that's a good roll for the guards because they get plus one because they are elite. But then they have to take a minus one because they are attacking a rough. A rough hex. And then that is a defender retreat. So the Romanians have to retreat. Uh, of course the guards are not following because that would leave Rostov open. So they are not. It's tempting though. So we'll stay here and use two points to attack the 17th. See if we can disrupt them a little bit. No, I can't probably. Because they get plus two for being Germans. And I get plus one for being an elite unit. And that's it. No effect. Do you want to try to do it again? Yeah, why not? I think it's worth just to keep trying. And I get six in total. No, that's probably a no effect. That is a no effect. The last attack. Oops. For them and one for the Soviets. Attacker stopped, so I was lucky it was not an attacker attrition. So the only question remains if I should bring up the 21st from Stalingrad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Putting in here, putting, yeah, stopping here with the 21st behind the river, so the river provides some kind of defense. Um, I think next round they're going to smash me, so I will try to withdraw across the river and make a new defense parameter here. Okay, so let's check for supplies. I don't think there is a problem. Everything is in supply, so we skip the no supply phase. Replacements. Yes, for sure. The Soviets will pay two points to refit uh, this Panzer. And that's all they, they can refit. And they don't have any more points, so they can't remove sorties and neither can the Germans. The upgrade phase, there are still no upgrades available. And then it's the mobilization phase, but there are no units in the mobilization box. We check for victory and now it is looking better for the Germans, for the Axis. But they are starting to run out of time. Only four turns left to accomplish their mission. So we'll do the end of turn phase. The tank marker becomes available. The up there's an upgrade. There is a couple of new event markers, the Partisans and the Heavy Artillery. So we are now in December 1942. Oh, by the way, I rolled for the the ground support I used, and it was it got I got a five. So one, two, three, four, five. So that will be after the campaign ends. So I remove it from the game. So we stop here for now with unconditional surrender, Case Blue, and I hope to see you next time around Christmas in 1942. Mm-hmm. <laughs>